you might have heard that there's a new uh, new Doom game that came out recently, and that's cool, right? But wait, what's this? Ray tracing? Ray tracing requirements? Huh, that's odd. But wait, there have been a few games out recently that require ray tracing. It's a must-have, and we've covered them here. So what gives? Are fancy reflections really that important? Does it really change gameplay all that much? Well, hold on a second. It's not just the reflections. More and more games are starting to use and rely on ray tracing for global illumination. And from a development standpoint, you know, software development, game development, it actually makes a lot of sense and could lead to shorter, more efficient development cycles and development times for some of these games. Uh, let's take a closer look. Let's, let's unpack this a little bit because I want to ramble. Before we get into it, it's probably a good idea to explain uh, what exactly ray tracing is in computer graphics in, in this context especially because there's a couple of ways uh, of displaying an image and the, the one that's typically used by game engines uh, is called rasterization so I think everybody's pretty familiar with this if you like to play games and it's converting a series of polygons into a 2d image that can be displayed on a screen so recreating a 3d space on your screen. Well, it's probably the most common rendering technique used uh, in games. E even games that use ray tracing still rely on polygons for, for everything else. I mean, you can get ray trace reflections and lighting, but there's still going to be heavy use of rasterization techniques for geometry. Like, you couldn't have a GPU that only does ray tracing. For ray tracing itself, it's kind of like simulating the way that light works in the real world. Photons are emitted from a source, and they bounce off of objects. And they, some of those eventually come back to our eyes, which, you know, translate those photons into the images that we can see in our brains. Ray tracing works kind of the same way. You're literally tracing the ray that the photon travels, or you create a certain number of simulated photons, the path that the photons take before they reach the camera in the scene of the game. And since photons in real life can be blocked by surfaces or absorbed by surfaces, uh, it, you know, creating shadows, uh, or reflect off of polished surfaces, which make the polished surface a kind of secondary source of light from the primary source, the reflections. And then the reflections themselves can become distorted through glass. The rays in a ray trace game can behave in a lot of the same ways. Generally, ray trace lighting looks more realistic. And since they're basically behaving like light, it, 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 you know, the way that light behaves in real life creates a more realistic image, in other words. Um, but it is computationally intensive. Although ray tracing in games is a relatively recent thing, because <laughs> there's billions and billions of photons, it's actually been used in computer graphics for years and years. In fact, um, the modern idea of ray tracing comes from a paper written in 1969 by uh, Arthur Apple uh, from uh, for IBM. And a decade later, uh, Turner uh, Witted, Wilted described using uh, Apple's techniques to capture reflections and shadows and refraction, distortion, that sort of thing. For decades, CGI that you see in movies has used ray tracing uh, extensively with vast render farms dedicated to uh, pumping out the image. Everybody sort of remembers Toy Story. It's like, oh, it took a month per frame to be able to do this, and then they scaled up the computing. But the power of computing required for ray tracing meant that, you know, it remained out of reach. Like, you're not going to be gaming in real time when it takes 30 minutes or a month or whatever to render a single frame. And at least until 2018. 2018, NVIDIA released their first RTX cards. Uh, these cards were the first consumer-grade GPUs capable of doing at least some real-time interactive ray tracing in a scene. And I'm sure you remember the RTX on, RTX off videos from that era. <laughs> with, uh, with RTX on, adding a bunch of uh, really fancy looking. But the issue is games performed uh, markedly worse with uh, ray tracing on, to the point that if you wanted to enjoy like smooth, steady gameplay, most most gamers wouldn't use it. I mean, you could turn ray tracing on. My point again is that 
RT is computationally intensive even today. That's kind of where DLSS comes in, sort of, like NVIDIA is hoping that AI will fill in some, some of the gaps here, but that's a whole other can of worms. Since 2018, NVIDIA's ray tracing hardware has only gotten better, and with uh, 4,000 series cards able to play many ray trace titles, at least if you have a 40, 70, 40, 80, 40, 90, without DLSS at a reasonable resolutions and reasonable frame rates, uh, not only that, but the actual ray tracing has gotten a lot better in games, more efficient. The software's gotten better. Compare the implementation in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where it's really just ray trace shadows. I mean, it's not, not all that amazing, to Cyberpunk 2077 as it is today, big difference. <laughs> not launch day 2077, that's a, that's a whole other, that's, the launch day 2077 is not good. Developers have started to use ray tracing for global illumination. Global illumination is, uh, I mentioned that, but we haven't gotten to talk about that yet, just uh, global illumination has been a thing forever. Basically, from a game development standpoint, it means the lighting in a scene uh, is done realistically but you've probably heard the term baked in lighting or global illumination usually means baked in lighting like like ray tracing and rasterization there are advantages and so when you build the game or when you render the game it's baking in the lighting when it's compiling the game but it's static because it's done at build time it's done at compile time it doesn't change or if it does change it's layered on top of something else uh, sony's recent spider-man games for example the lighting looks great but there's really not a coherent uh, day night cycle only set times of day and it's because those have been pre-rendered into the texture global illumination is also much more labor intensive uh, than than you might think because you know since the light must be manually placed and dealt with developers can run into all sorts of edge cases so you got to compile and render out a scene make sure it looks reasonable anytime they change the lighting because they can create a situation where it's like oops i forgot to give that texture uh or that uh, polygon texture and now it's perfectly flat and it's you know it's blown out or whatever the development process with that is not a lot of fun now what does this have to do with games like doom and indiana jones or the new doom and indiana jones requiring ray tracing well recently i happened upon a video um, by the brilliant folks at Digital Foundry. And they talk about uh, this, and they spoke with Billy Kahn, um, id Software's director of uh, engine technology, in their video. And Mr. Kahn spoke about using ray tracing to basically push the, the workload of global illumination from the compile side onto the client's PC, allowing for you know, what, what basically amounts to real-time global illumination. Using ray tracing for lighting also helps keep game sizes smaller. Uh, Ubisoft technical architect uh, Nicholas Lopez spoke at the Game Developers Conference earlier this year, and he noted that if the lighting in Assassin's Creed, uh, Assassin's Creed Shadows, uh, was rendered in the same way as it was in earlier titles, it was probably going to take two years to render out what would take up an, uh, around two terabytes of storage space for all of the lighting data. You, you could watch Nicholas's talk in its entirety. There's a lot of uh, a lot of interesting, fascinating stuff in there that's gone into Assassin's Creed. But the takeaway is that ray tracing made Assassin's Creed Shadows' insane technical presentation not only feasible but easier to accomplish on the development side as well. Now, all this sounds great, right? I mean. There, there's still issues. Something like 15% of people do not have any ray tracing capable GPU based on, you know, a cursory glance at the Steam hardware survey. It's a lot of, that drives a lot in the industry. Furthermore, AMD's ray tracing capabilities until very recently, the 9000 series, weren't in the same league as NVIDIA's. And that's a lot of people who have great raster performance, but maybe not awesome ray tracing performance that'll have trouble with your game. A possible answer to this issue could be Lumen, uh, Lumen's a global illumination technology that ships with Unreal, uh, Unreal Engine 5, actually. However, it's only available in Unreal Engine 5, which <laughs> has its own set of issues, as it turns out. All of that aside, how does this work out in a game? Well, on 4090, with maxed out settings running at 1440p, I was able to have a completely smooth experience in Doom The Dark Ages, uh, and the Indiana Jones 
uh, you know, the Great Circle. I also tested both games with a 7900 XTX to see if AMD's, uh, you know, lesser ray tracing capabilities from last gen hampered performance. And other than a slightly lower frame rate, it was actually pretty playable. Now, this is, uh, you know, when Indiana Jones first launched, it was, uh, it, was a little, it was a little rough, but now it's actually fine. Uh, look, we're in, we're in a bit of a weird spot right now. PC hardware has only gotten more expensive along with everything else. I mean, <laughs> groceries and that. So a lot of people on older hardware um, might not, you know, even think to try ray tracing or they might not have the best ray tracing experience because if you have something worse than 7900 XTX, even from last gen, I mean, and game budgets, studio budgets are spiraling out of control at the same time that audience expectations are sky high. And nobody also, you know, it's, nobody wants to pay for a $90 game. So I can't help but look at this kind of thing and be amazed at what small indie publishers can accomplish with modern technologies. What, what took a team weeks to months to accomplish can be done in a matter of days with some of the new game engine technologies and some of the new technologies in, in the card. So ray tracing, uh, you know, saved time from using ray trace global illumination, for example, would allow developers to make bigger and more interesting worlds for the same budget or rein in some of the other budgets. I think a lot of the frustration gamers feel today is that they're looking around and they're looking at games that rehash old IP that are wildly expensive and that don't really feel or, or, or see fidelity or gameplay improvements the way that they have in the past. And what's missing today, I think, is what, what gamers crave is fresh, innovative gameplay. Something new to sink their teeth into. Not just another you know, polygon count race or a visual fidelity race. Uh, look at this decade plus old illustration from FOK.NL. It's a great illustration from when this discussion was happening more than a decade ago among gamers. Look at the diminishing returns in model fidelity upping the polygon count. Using game tech like real-time ray tracing and real-time global illumination and AI upscaling routines and latency minimization tools and more of that kind of stuff is not really, it's no longer limited to just the absolute top tier cards when we're talking about 5000 series NVIDIA and the 9060 and the 9070. I mean, mid-range GPUs are able to use some of these newer technologies, not at 4K. So like Quake 2, Quake 2 RTX, almost 30 years old, super low polygon, but it was completely transformed into a jaw-dropping ray tracing experience you look, I mean, look at this. It looks amazing. When you realize, when you look at that, you can sort of realize how powerful these technologies can be. And even smaller teams and indie studios can leverage them. I think that that will mean smaller teams will be able to build more uh, and build more interesting, innovative games. <laughs> and with the AI unemployment, now there's never been a better time. <laughs> Baking in lighting versus ray trace lighting or using hacks to simulate lighting effects because it's like, okay, we got baked in lighting, but then we're gonna do this with, you know, changing the texture out or whatever, and then careful planning across many different areas of the game, or you just, you just render it, or you just, you know, you leverage what's built into the game engine. So gamers are kind of right to be frustrated, I think. Nvidia added ray tracing, you know, several generations ago now, and what I'm starting to see now at least in, in some of these games, especially some of the more, you know, the games that are from smaller studios, is exactly the kind of innovation that is missing from AAA and AAA space. Uh, and speaking of AAA games versus, you know, games from smaller studios, uh, let's talk about Expedition 33. You know, Claire Obscure. I, if you haven't played it, it's an excellent RPG from a small team of ex Ubisoft developers. Uh, it's a second, you know, Stray also from Ubisoft. I know it was made by a small team, um, a small ish team, but it looks just as good as most mega budget AAA games, and it's a lot of fun. And it was made like it's, it's a relatively small team for a fraction of the cost. Modern ray tracing and, and rendering techniques, uh, really good, uh, you know, visuals on the actors, on the models. You know, take a look at the indie games that are releasing today. Uh, gone are the days of crude pixel art. Uh, with some notable exceptions. I mean, pixel art's always a lot of fun. You can do innovative pixel art. But instead, we have these lush, fully realized worlds that are, uh, in 2010, would be unthinkable. But today, those are just two of, you know, three hundreds of fully realized, independent games that release every year. And it looks like in 2025, the best games of the year are gonna be these indie games. And technology is sort of 
you know, sort of underpinning some of that. Epic has brought some of this into the future, although some, uh, you know, Unreal de developers would say it's like we fix the bugs and then Epic benefits from that, which is sort of fun. But ray tracing is 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 interesting in 2025, more interesting than it was when it debuted, and more interesting in that the game engine technology is getting to the point where it can catch up. So yeah, I don't I don't get to ramble about video games very much. But I thought this was interesting from a game development standpoint that you can peel away all of the layers of like the shortcuts to simulate lighting or simulate everything, put it in the game engine, and then let uh, people who want to work on a game use the game engine and come up with, with things that are really interesting and innovative as far as gameplay. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. This has been a fun ramble. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums.